Okay. Yeah. So again, good morning, everyone. Welcome to BA 99.1. So in our last lecture, we basically talked about um, yung course expectation. So what are we planning to learn um, for the whole semester? And again, it's all about the fundamental accounting theory or simply accounting 101. So um, for any chats, um, kindly let me know na lang sa audio if I can't see it uh, immediately. But um, for the questions, basically I segmented today's lecture into six learning objectives. So every after learning objective, uh, I will allot time naman per question. So I'll be able to check those chats naman. So just type away if ever you have any questions or clarification. Particularly for today's lecture, kasi super important siya because this will be our foundation in terms of understanding the world of accounting. So uh, moving on, um, yun, going back to what we mentioned, um, again, uh, the reason why I'm highlighting is that the first exam will be on November 5. So working backwards, that's eight weeks away and then 16 sessions. So roughly, parang it looks like malayo pa siya. But then um, I think one of my co-professors told me na um, in terms of like the accounting that was taken um, dun sa mga strands, usually it's just from our first um, module, uh, chapter one to four. So that's basically from conceptual framework all the way to completing the accounting cycle. So basically, parang assemble's worth of um, subjects will be condensed in a crash course of eight weeks. So in terms of the pace, um, just to set your expectations, medyo karang siya in the sense that marami talaga tayong tututunan in terms of the fundamentals and the concepts. So in order to make this very operational for us, uh, I will try to make sure that in terms of the sessions, um, for every chapter, meron tayong two to three sessions, right? So the first session will be a concept lecture. So this is where um, I'll be teaching how do you solve for the examples, what are the underlying frameworks that we can use. And then after that, the next session will be focused on solving exercises and answering theory. So the reason being, um, yung second session kasi is closer to the chapter quiz. So doon na talaga mag-highlight yung mga ano ba yung mga kailangan yung matutunan, ano ba yung mga exercises na pwede niyang tingnan. So and, um, in terms of like the quiz component, uh, long test component, um, there's around 30% for the first exam. So kindly take note na, again, like what I said, ipunin na natin um, our grades uh, sa first exam pa lang. So with that said, um, before I begin with the formal lecture, um, wanted to highlight four things. So basically, I dubbed it like our pre-lecture tips so that you can really maximize um, these sessions, uh, particularly with like the limited time that we have. And, um, uh, ideally, and what I really recommend is for you to memorize theory. So basically, um, if may nakita kayong ma-arty na text na parang double siya, na parang may shadow, may drop shadow, tapos very colorful. The reason why I really wanted to highlight that in our slides is that super important concept siya. So that in terms of theory, you'd expect na probably baka ito yung mga lumabas in terms of like exercises, quizzes, lectures. And therefore, it's very important for you to memorize um, the following. Number one, if there's an important accounting definition, as much as possible, try to memorize the keywords. So for example, for assets, siyempre para medyo mahaba yung phrase, right? So basically, as much as possible, um, um, bare minimum, memorize nyo na it's a resource, a result of past event and future economic benefit. And then siyempre, hopefully, dapat you understand also the definition, right? Second, things to memorize. If there are lists or classifications, Kindly make sure to also memorize all of these um, classifications, distinctions, characteristics, because this is also fundamental theory uh, that we expect you to know at heart. And then lastly, third would be comparisons. So in accounting, masakit siya sa ulo because there's a lot of comparisons, there's a lot of different scenarios. So pag may nakita kayong table like this um, on the lower right, so these ones, Make sure na you know what are their similarities, what are their differences, and then ano ba yung mga different factors to compare and contrast them. So again, number one, in terms of um, exams, ang pinakamadaling i-perfect theory. So again, memorize theory. Next, um, second tip. When it comes to solving problems, particularly accounting equations, make sure na you play around with the formulas given. So as much as possible, I'll try my best to cover all scenarios. But like what I mentioned, the most common pain point 
Um, ah, sorry. Thank you. So, thank you, Jeremy. Sorry. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Yeah, add and uh, yeah, dash. Yeah. So okay. So in terms of like solving problems, again, as much as possible, I'll try to cover all scenarios um in our sessions. Pero going back to the most common pain point na ano ba yan? Parang yung diniskas sa class hindi naman yun yung lumabas sa exam. Um, the reason being is that usually when you give a master formula, we expect uh yung personal expectation is you understand the underlying iterations of that master formula. So for example, in class, we discussed that A is equal to L plus E. So um, we expect na you also understand na, you know, basic math 100, na yung L is equal to A minus E or E is equal to A minus L. So later, I'll show you naman how we break it down. Pero in all kinds of solving, make sure na you know how to play around with the formula or the framework. Kasi, kware, yung sa class, ang diniscuss natin, ang missing is si A. Pero sa exam, baka lumabas, missing si B, missing si C. So, basically, it makes it more complex. And the only way for you to understand is really for you to hihimayin nyo talaga yung mga formula. So, we'll see that na naman later. And then, um, next, last two tips before we begin. Um, so, as much as possible, um, I also try to have group learnings um, in terms of our modules. So, uh, right now, um, maybe we can play around gamification. I'm thinking Kahoot, but I'm not sure kung uso pa yun now. So um, my request, um, particularly after this session, if you know any better active learning tools from other digital classes, like Slido or something else, um, kindly let me know. Um, I'll study them. Then as much as possible, ganun na lang tayo mag-recite. Kaysa yung parang, um, you know, I'll ask a question and I'll ask people. Uh, aside from this, I'll try to do like polls or asking people in the chat. But the more important thing here is that after this session, I will open up our exercise wish list for chapter one. So what does that mean? Diba sa second session or our session on Tuesday, that will be primarily solving for exercises. Na number one, exercises na I already gave um, in the folder. Um, so ang expectation is by next week, um, you'll be able to submit it before our Tuesday um session. And then second, um, if we have more time, I can answer um, some examples from Wigan. Pero syempre, um, I'd ideally, this would be coming from you. So like what I mentioned, after you've done the exercises, just browse through Wigan. And then if meron kayo natatakot na items, kindly list them down. And then uh, we'll figure out a way on how we can vote on which ones we'll discuss. Para lang meron tayong more exercises during the solving period. Lastly, um, when it comes to the class space, um, if it's a bit fast, um, I think it's also intended so that we have more time for exercises. And then the reason why I'm a bit more confident to go at a faster rate is because we're going to be uploading naman the video lecture. So um, it's very reviewable. So parang as much as possible when I upload to YouTube, uh, meron naman siya mga markers on parang ano yung different segments. So kung meron kayong mga particular parts na parang kailangan yung balikan, just look for the timestamps and then go to the accord, um to the part accordingly. But then um another thing is that if it's still too fast, then I really recommend na before any concept lectures, thoroughly read the book na para reinforcement na lang and mastery um for today's lecture. So actually um that's it in terms of pre-lecture tips. Um before I begin with our very first um session, um, do you have any questions from the class? Um, if none, kindly parang thumbs up na lang in the chat for I know when to do so. Or no questions naman. So I think we can formally begin our lesson for today. So um, for today, we're going to be discussing chapter one or the conceptual framework and the accounting principles. So again, in terms of source material, this is just chapter one of your way done uh, book. Now, like what I've mentioned, uh, we broke down today's lecture into three major parts. So our three major parts, again, uh, usually it's just the BAA framework. So in the first part, what we want to do is to broaden our understanding of the business context. So basically, we have two learning objectives under this first part. So number one, let's explain what accounting is, what is the formal definition of what accounting is. 
Number two, who uses accounting? Ano ba yung mga activities? Sino ba yung mga users na gumagamit ng accounting? So now that we're clear with who and what is accounting, the second part will be focusing on accounting for transactions and master recording. So basically, um, under this, our two learning objectives would be, number one, master or familiarize ourselves with the building blocks of accounting. And then second would be for us to take a deep dive into the ultimate accounting equation and then defining its components. And then finally, <clears throat> once we're done with um, understanding the accounting equation, we're going to be moving on to the last part, which would be analyzing financial statements. So number one, uh, so the fifth learning objective here would be the transaction analysis. So analyzing the effects of business transactions to our different accounting equation components. And then our sixth and final learning objective is we describe the four financial statements and how they are prepared. So for this particular one, given the time, I'm just going to be quickly introducing to you the four financial statements. And then um, in terms of like the making of it, baka we'll take a more deep dive in the next session. <clears throat> so now that we're all aligned in terms of um, our lecture overview, let's begin with learning objective one. So again, at the start of um, accounting 101, definitely ang kailangan nating alamin is, ano nga ba ang accounting, right? So what is the formal definition of accounting? And <clears throat> according to Wigan, accounting is a financial information system that does three things. It identifies, it records, and communicates economic events of a business entity or corporation so that it can communicate uh, to users which will they use for making. So again, I understand one of my pet peeves is uh, definition, parang sakit niya sa ulo tingnan. So let's break it down into the three major parts so that we can have a clear understanding of what accounting really is in terms of its most basic form, right? So let's go to the first step. So number one, what are the major steps in accounting? So again, it's identify, record, and communicate. So number one in identifying, basically ang ginagawa lang dito, what are the transactions na an accountant needs to record? So now, so ikaklasify mo yung uh, uh, um, among the business events, among the different events that's happening around the company, which ones are economic events that we need to identify and to record? Then next, um, the next step would be to record them. So how do you record the economic events? So through classifying and summarizing them, mostly through journal entries, right? And then lastly, pag may mga journal entries ka na, the last step is for you to communicate this information to your end users, right? So how do we analyze? So under communication, that's where you prepare your reports and interpret for your users. So to make this hardworking, um, let's take a deep dive into the first step. So identify. So when it comes to businesses or corporations, um, there are a lot of events happening, right? But in terms of accounting, what we really want to focus on are events that we call economic events, contrast to what I call personal events. So let's first define what an economic event is. So events, uh, an economic event is what's a consequential to a business entity. So usually, it comprises what we call transactions, and ultimately, those should be measurable in terms of monetary units. So if it's consequential to the business and it's measure, measurable in terms of monetary units, that's what we call economic events. And those are what we identify and those are what we record in accounting. In contrast, we don't record or wala tayong pakialam when it comes to personal events. So what do I mean by personal events? So personal events mean that they're completely unrelated to the business and or they're not quantifiable when it comes to monetary units. So again, our basic framework is in the first step of identifying, you ask yourself, is this transaction an economic event or a personal event? If it's an economic event, then yes, we will record them. If it's a personal event, we won't record them. Kaya may X in check. So to make this um, more hardworking, let's look at an example, right? So let's look at it in terms of like a context of like a spin studio. So I think uh, recently yun yung mga, yung mga hobbies during the pandemic. So let's say 
a business owner buys 50 spin bikes for their bike studio at 54,000 each. So that is an example of an economic event because number one, it's related to the business. Ano ba yung business niya? Bike studio. Ano yung ginawa niya? Bumili siya ng spin bikes na gagamitin ng bike studio. So 50. And then, is it measurable in terms of monetary units? Yes, it's 54,000 each bike, right? So definitely, it's an economic event and therefore, we should record these types of events. In contrast, let's look at the next example. A business owner buys a spin bike for his personal gains using their own money. So this one is not an economic event and it's more of a personal event because number one, his overall fitness naman is completely unrelated to his business of running a bike studio. And then second, yung pera naman na ginamit niya is not the money of the business. It's his own personal money or it's her own personal money. And therefore, this is a personal event and hindi natin siya i-record. Okay, another example to make it a bit more clear. Next, so di ba, bumili siya ng bike. The next thing that happened is that their bike studio earned 100,000 in revenues from increased partnership. So again, is it consequential to the business? Yes, because earnings siya, right? Um, and then second, um, may monetary unit ba? Yes, 100,000. So again, it's an economic event and therefore we should record these types of events. In contrast, um, let's look at the second one. Sabi niya, the business owner, they are the most hyped studio in existence. So, okay, maybe it's kind of related to their business, but then it fails the second criteria, which is it's not quantifiable in monetary unit. Meaning, hindi mo na paano, magkano naman yung kwenta mo na most hyped siya, right? So again, this is a personal or a subjective event and therefore is not an economic event. So in terms of the ones that we will record, it's the ones on the left or the economic events and then we don't record personal events, okay? So that's step one. Step two, now that we have identified what are the economic events, so again, yung parang their bikes to you earned 100,000 in revenue from increased partnership. The second uh, step is to turn that economic event into what we call or record them into what we call journal entries, right? So journal entries is just basically um, a bunch of entries in order to make sure that you apply the financial standards based on a given economic event. So right now, you don't need to parang care about ano ba yung debit or credit or how to write journal entries. Ang importante lang now is that you understand that from an economic event, we record them into journal entries. That's basically the second step of recording. And then we move on to the last step, which is communicating, right? So the last step is communicating. So meron kang economic event, right? And every economic event, meron corresponding journal entry. So let's say the bike studio has been running for months or even years. So syempre, marami yung economic events. And the more economic events, sobrang dumadami rin yung mga journal entries that you record. So the last step is that after you have so many journal entries, you actually compile and compute them and summarize them into what we call financial statements. So the financial statements would be your reports that you would use to communicate your users and so that you can use it also to analyze or interpret the data. So basically, in a nutshell, from journal entries, gagawin natin siyang financial statements. So in summary, that's basically accounting. Yun lang naman yung tututunan natin for the next <laughs> for the next few weeks. Now, accounting is, number one, let's learn how to identify the economic events. Number two, let's master how to turn those economic events into journal entries. And then number three, let's learn how to communicate these journal entries into financial statements so that we know how to analyze and interpret the data contained in these financial statements. So now, um, the most common question in accounting is, Accounting, hindi ba yung parang bookkeeping? So what's the difference between accounting and bookkeeping? Well, bookkeeping is only focusing on one part of the accounting um, form, uh, the accounting cycle, which is recording lang. So when you say bookkeeping, it only talks about recording um, the economic events um, versus um, accounting in general, which includes also the identifying and the communicating part. 
So yeah. again, simply, bookkeeping versus accounting is bookkeeping just pertains to the recording phase of accounting. And then accounting is a more holistic and includes the identify and communication step um, of accounting. And uh, another question is, why do we even need to learn accounting? And I actually quickly touch upon this during our first lecture. Now, ultimately, accounting is the language of business. And because we are in the data of summarizing important financial information and then breaking it down so that may intindihan ng different users, accounting, therefore, is the basis of every decision made in businesses. So uh, whether it be measuring the business activity, processing information to make our reports, and finally, communicate to our decision makers so that they can make decisions based on our financial statements um, na nakuha natin from our journal entries and economic events. And then again, um, in a more layman's way, accounting is like a universal scorecard na it's an objective way to ob assess and compare businesses because it's conceptually consistent and that when you have same transactions, they are treated the same way. So um, very important to note is that if therefore, ang purpose ng accounting is sinasummarize natin yung financial data natin in order to make sure na we present information to users so that they can make business decisions. Like for example, for managers, ano yung mga kailangan nilang gawin para improve yung revenue or for investors, maganda ba yung company? Magand profitable ba siya? Maganda ba yung returns niya? So accounting really deals with a lot of information. And therefore, accounting is only as useful as the information it presents. So actually, this is a concept na I also heard from a finance prof na garbage in, garbage out. Meaning, if pangit yung information na pinapasok mo dun sa system, then pangit rin yung insights na makukuha mo for your decision making. And therefore, one of the things na super important sa accounting is that the information should be usable for the end users. And therefore, meron tayong framework na ginagamit in order to test whether information is useful or not. So under accounting, under the conceptual framework of accounting, they have what you call your two fundamental qualitative characteristics of information. And then you have their four enhancing qualitative characteristics of information. So now the question is, ano bang pagkakaiba ng fundamental na dalawa and then yung enhancing na apat? So fundamental qualitative characteristics means that these are the characteristics that every information should have. So it's essential to make the information usable. In contrast, enhancing qualitative characteristic only enhances our fundamental or our relevant and reliable information. Okay, so yun yung distinction. So again, we have two fundamental qualitative characteristics and four enhancing qualitative characteristics. So ano yung mas important? Yung fundamental. This is more of our primary criteria. And then the four enhancing would be our secondary criteria. So let's break down. Ano nga ba yung two fundamental uh, characteristics? So they are relevant and reliable. reliable. So the two R's, right? Relevant and reliable. So now let's focus muna on relevant. So what makes an information relevant? So basically, you ask yourself, using this information, is it capable of making a difference in the decision? So uh, either it has predictive value, meaning it will be able to help you predict what will happen in the future using the information that you have now. So for future events, it has predictive value or it has what you call confirmatory value. So using the information you have now, you'll be able to assess a past event and you're, you'll be able to judge whether, ah, maganda pala yung performance or ah, pangit pala yung performance. So again, in asking yourself whether our information is relevant, you ask yourself, is it capable of making a difference in a decision? And very close to relevance is what we call materiality. So basically, makikita niyo in further accounting classes if ever. Pero basically, we only account for material information. Meaning, um, an omission or misstatement could influence a decision. So uh, let's take a parang example away from accounting. So 
let's say um your decision was UP. Parang should I enroll in UP versus the other universities? Now the information is ah apparently due to the budget cut, hindi na pala free yung tuition fee, right? So is this relevant information? Definitely. Is it a material information? Definitely. Kasi kung hindi alam na hindi na pala free yung UP, uh, that could change your decision of going to the college. Definitely, baka you'd still pursue. But a lot of you might have to rethink na, okay, parang baka I have better choices. And therefore, that's your litmus test, whether it's relevant or not. Kapag hindi, ba al- pag hindi nyo ba alam yung information, mag-iiba yung decision nyo. Pag ang sagot nyo is yes, then it's material. And if it's material, then it's relevant. So that is our first fundamental characteristic. So the second one is that aside from being relevant, it should also be reliable. So the question is, can I trust this information? So in the world of fake news, super important or fundamental for information to be reliable. And uh, uh, information is reliable. So you ask yourself three things. Is it complete? Meaning, lahat ba ng necessary information nandun? Second, is it neutral? Meaning, um, free ba siya from bias? Hindi ba siya parang minanipulate? Right? And then third, free of error. Na tama yung pag-compute niya, tama yung sinasabi niya. And if you have complete, neutral, and free of error um, types of information, you can confidently say that they are reliable. And if they are reliable, you say that they have faithful representation to um, the economic events that's, part of, uh, that's focusing on the businesses. So again, our two fundamental or essential characteristics for useful information would be relevant and reliable. Now moving on, so okay, we now understand that every information should be relevant and reliable. But in order to enhance or take to the next level the types of information, these are the four enhancing qualitative characteristics that ideally they should have. So I call, uh, para madaling tandaan, V-cut. So V-cut, yung, yung mahilig kayo sa chip. So first, it has to be verifiable. So meaning, what do you mean by verifiable? Na pag inask mo yung different knowledgeable or independent observers, they can reach a consensus na, okay, tama tong information na to. This is actually free of error. It's neutral. So if you ask expert 1, expert 2, expert 100, kahit iba-iba pa sila, if they reach a consensus na tama yung information, then yes, that information is verifiable. Second, it's comparable. So there is consistency in how you account or the accounting methods you use. So you can identify and understand similarities and differences. So again, same treatment, same accounting, same scenario, same treatment. So diba, going back, as a universal scorecard, you can objectively compare and contrast different kinds of companies. And therefore, the reason why is because they have comparable information. Um, last uh, two would be understandable, meaning... Siyempre, kahit na sobrang ganda ng information mo, kung hindi naman na-understand ng target audience mo, then it's useless, right? So, meaning, you are able to classify, characterize, and present information clearly and concisely. So now, kindly take note na ano ba yung basihan natin na understandable? Yung point of view na we're looking is that understandable siya with the people um, used to financial information. So meron silang reasonable knowledge when it comes to accounting. So, meaning, syempre, yung mga hindi nag-study ng accounting, pag tinignan nila yung financial in, uh, statement, hindi talaga nila maintindihan, right? But for business people, there, there's an expectation that they should have reasonable knowledge. And therefore, it should be understandable to them to a certain capacity. But for the people na wala talagang pakis sa accounting, okay lang na hindi nila maintindihan, right? Because, again, wala naman reasonable knowledge um, from a layman. And then finally, it should be timely meaning that it should be available in time in order to influence a decision. So in summary, the four enhancing characteristics would be VCUT. It should be verifiable. It should be comparable. It should be understandable. And then it should be timely. So actually, um, that ends our first um, part, which is defining accounting.
do we have any questions um regarding this first learning objective um if none kindly do a thumbs up ulit um so that we can proceed to the next concept okay so align pa naman okay good um second so now okay so the first learning objective was okay let's define accounting let's have a clear idea on what it is in the most basic form and then let's look at the criteria of what makes information useful. Now, the second thing they ask is, okay, sino ba gumagamit ng accounting, ba? So who are the users and the activities? And in any case, the people that use accounting the most would be your different organizations, right? So what are your different business organizations? You have three. You have what you call your sole propri proprietorship, um, second, you have your partnerships. And then lastly, you have your corporations. So I think in terms of our basic understanding or you know, from someone that's completely new to accounting, ang pinaka-familiar sa atin would be your corporations, right? So yung mga businesses, big conglomerates, right? Um, and then yung sole, partnership, uh, sole proprietorship and partnership, not as familiar. So basically, um, these are the three types of organizations. And they differ because of um, various factors. Um, number one, kung gano'n sila kadali i-form. Number two, gano'n kadali mag-raise ng capital in order for you to invest in your business. Or number three, the types of um, liabilities um, that you have as a business owner depending on your type of organization. So, si sole proprietorship, meaning kadaling i-form. Siya yung parang, pare ako, nag-decide ako, uy, parang mabenta pala um, yung Basque Burn Cheesecake. Uh, sige nga, magluto ako and then mag-start ako ng IG shop. So basically, that's a sample of a sole proprietorship. In contrast to a corporation na talagang meron silang strict articles of um, incorporation, kailangan nakafile sila sa um, re relevant um, government bodies. So hassle gawin, right? So in order to compare and contrast the different types of organizations, we'll use the following in order to compare them. Number one, number of second the, um, the ability for it to raise capital. Third would be the liability to the owners. Fourth would be the life, meaning gano ba haba usually these types of organizations. And then the last two would be regulation and management. So again, let's begin to compare and contrast. So first, um, number of owners. Sa sole prop, isa lang yung owner, right? Kung sino man yung sole proprietorship. For partnerships, you for more partners. Um, and then finally, for corporation, um, majority of corporations are required na at least five incorporators. Pero due to parang recent um, updates, we actually have what we call one-person corporations. Um, kaya naka-asterisk. So basically, uh, parang a person, or li it's limited to natural individuals, not in the practice of profession, trust, or estate. So kindly take note lang na Corporations, majority of the time, at least five incorporators, where there's an existence of our OPCs or one-person uh, corporations. Next, in terms of capital. So, pag sole prop, basically, yung capital or the amount of money I can raise is actually limited lang sa savings ko, right? So, for example, nag-start ako ng Basque Burn Cheesecake, it's only limited to uh, how much yung naipon ko sa banko, di ba? So, mahirap uh, bumili ng ingredients. Depende siya kung gano'ng karami yung ipon ko. Comparing to a partnership. Sa partnership, since two or more people kayo, um, kware, may, pe, kware, uh, may pera ko pero hindi sapat. So I'll partner with someone na um, willing makipag-joint uh, venture sa akin or into a partnership, right? So in terms of our capital, definitely it's more than just one person, but it's still limited to the number of capital uh, that the, each of the partner has. Compared to a corporation na literally yung corporation can really scale because it's limited to the available shares or the number of investors that they have into the stake of their company. So if you really want like high capital in terms of starting a business, then you'd consider a corporation. Pero kung hindi naman kailangan ng high capital, parang low capital lang, then you can go sole prop. Or parang kung middle lang, kung, kung mayaman naman kayo ng partners nyo, at saka hindi nyo naman kailangan humingi ng ibang investors, then mag-partnership kayo. Next, liability. Um, Honestly, ito yung parang crucial rin in decision making. Ang problema sa uh, sole prop is it has unlimited personal liability. Anong ibig sabihin nun? So for example, gumawa ako ng ano, diba, cake shop. 
knock on wood, parang while ginagawa ko kasi parang puwet ako from like solving accounting, parang naligyan ko ng ipis yung cake. Tapos parang nagkasakit yung customer. Now, if they sue me for like um, causing their sickness, pero dun sa tide sa business ko yung pwede nang habulin. Pwede nilang habulin yung personal savings ko, yung bahay ko, um, yung mga clothes ko, etc. etc. So that's what it means to have unlimited personal liability. So syempre, that's the huge downside. Syempre, ayaw mo naman mawala lahat ng life savings mo because of a business, right? Um, in contrast to partnerships and corporation. Sa partnership, um, it has still unlimited personal liability. Pero kasi the unique feature of a partnership is that you have two types of partners, right? You have your general partner and then you have your limited partner. Usually, your general partner is yung parang talagang nagmamanage no whole partnership. And then partner, siya yung parang medyo nag infuse lang ng capital. Now, kay general partner, unlimited personal liability pa rin siya. Pag nagkaroon ng problema because of a partnership, pwedeng habulin yung assets niya beyond his investment in the business. Pero kapag limited partner ka, then limited rin yung liability mo. So for example, nag-invest ka lang ng 50,000 dun sa partnership, kahit na 1 million pa yung hinahabol sa inyo, yung 50,000 lang yung mawawala dun sa limited partner. In contrast, si general partner, kung nag-invest lang siya ng 50,000 tapos 1 million hinihingi, kukunin talaga lahat ng pera sa kanya. So, Si limited partner, probably 50,000 yung kukunin sa kanya. Si general partner, 950,000. So, yun yung downside ng partnership. So, for limited partners, better yung liability. For general partners, same risk as running a sole proprietorship. And then finally, for corporations, um, it's limited to your investment. So, given na sobrang dami namang merong stake doon sa company, yung liability mo lang is to the extent of your investment. So parang if you're a part of a corporation and invest mo lang is 20,000, kahit na 10 million pa yan, 20,000 lang yung mawawala sa'yo. Because that's your investment. Hindi nila pwedeng habulin yung personal savings mo or your personal account. Next, um, when it comes to the life, um, for sole prop and partnership, it's very limited because there's a personal aspect to it. Meaning, kung namatay yung sole prop or yung owner or yung so yung namatay yung mga partner magde-dissolve yung sole prop and yung partnership unlike a corporation na its ownership is in the shares that it has so pwede siyang i-transfer kahit na mamatay pwedeng inherit ng anak so in essence a corporation will continue forever unlike a sole prop or a partnership na it will die with its partners or it will die with it with its owners in a more sim simplistic sense of looking at it. And then in terms of regulation, so just kindly take note um, kung ano yung mga kailangan nila. Pero generally, ang um, mas mahirap uh, or mas hassle or mas maraming red tape would be partnerships and corporations. Um, so they deal with the SEC or Security Exchange Commission. Um, and then DTI lang si sole prop. So yun lang yun naman yung um, differences na nakikita. And then for management, um, so simple yung management sa sole prop kasi ikaw naman yung mag-manage yung own business mo eh. Sa partnership, medyo mas complex kasi, di ba, syempre, in any relationship naman pag uh, sa partnerships, depende naman yan sa pag investan mo um, in terms of who you think is a good partner. So again, there's, any, there's a complexity um, to it. And then corporation, um, it's very complex because it comprises a lot of owners, a lot of states, but there's a separate that there's a separation of ownership. So a uh, corporation is a separate entity from its individual owners. So again, those are your three different types of organizations. Your sole proprietorship, your partnership, and your corporation. These are the ones who usually use accounting, right? But let's take a more specific view. Who actually uses accounting data? Well, we that um, in terms of users, you can break them down into two. Internal users and external users. This is so important that you have different branches of accounting to account for the different types of users. For internal users, you have your managerial accounting. And then for external users, you have your financial accounting. So let's first focus on managerial accounting or internal users. 
So basically, um, for internal users, they use accounting data. So managers use the accounting data to plan, organize, and run the business. So they have internal reports in order to make decisions about the company. So ano ba yung mga decisions na they make in internal users? Basically, comparing operating alternatives, like how many should I produce? Um, should I go with supplier one? Should I go with supplier two? Second, ano ba yung mga projections of income? So ito yung kinita namin this year. Ano yung forecast ko na, so given this, ano yung kikitain natin next year or the next few years? Um, and then third, okay, parang gusto natin magbenta ng 10,000 units. How much capital or how much cash, cash would we need? So these are the answers, uh, or sorry, these are the questions um, that managerial accounting wants to answer for internal users. For us, um, the majority of what we're going to be focusing on is um, financial accounting. So for financial accounting, our focus would be external users. So sino ba yung mga external users? If internal users are your managers, external users are your investors, creditors, government agencies, customers, labor unions. So for them, ang mas important is your financial accounting. So basically, um, you buy, hold, or sell ownerships for investors, for creditors, evaluate whether to grant loan or not. For government agencies, assess compliance. For customers, um, company performance and labor units, uh, liquidity or ability to pay. So then, um, who uses accounting data? So um, for the sake of time, I'll just quickly answer um, this. Um, feel free to answer in, in the chat uh, if you want. So number one, marketing manager, which product line is the most profitable? So is this internal or external? Um, definitely marketing manager, kaya internal, right? Next, uh, yeah, thank you, Jor. <laughs> yeah, so next, BIR. So is the company paying the correct taxes based on their financial statements? Is it, um, okay, so, okay, thank you so much. So external, definitely, they would fall under government agencies. Next, banks. Will the company be able to pay its debt? Um, yeah, so external also, correct. Thank you. CFO or chief financing operate, uh, CFO. So is cash sufficient to pay bills? Uh, okay, internal, correct. Investors, is the business earning satisfactory income? Uh, external, okay, correct. So yeah, so yeah, basically simple. So for accounting, just define whether they're internal or external. And then know also the different business types and ano ba yung mga differences nila. That ends uh, learning objective two. Okay, so um, are, are there any questions before we proceed na to medyo the bulk of uh, today's discussion? Um, if none, kindly uh, do a thumbs up ulit sa chat so I can see. Okay, so now, we're done with um, all the parang establishing what is the formal definition of accounting, who are the users. Next question is, how do we start accounting, right? And before anything else, we need to focus on the building blocks. Ano ba yung mga important things na you need to know in order for us to start accounting? So there are four building blocks um, for accounting. So number one would be the ethics involved. So syempre, it's not enough to be a great accountant. One of the things, honor and excellence. So super important to know ethics. Second, ano ba yung standard setting bodies that would regulate the rules of accounting? Diba, like what I mentioned, accounting is just a set of rules in order to um, you know, assess or interact with the financial world. So we'll talk about generally accepted accounting principles. Third, how do you measure in general? What are the general rules right, and assumptions? So we'll focus on measurement principles and assumptions. So now that we're clear on the four building blocks, let's take a deep dive into the code of ethics, right? Basically, there's this thing called code of ethics for professional accountants in the Philippines. And the general idea here is that CPAs should act in the public interest because again, certified public accountants and therefore in the name, they are expected to act in the public interest. And what are the things that they should have? So they should have five things. Um, pick OC, right? 
So first is professional behavior, meaning that they are expected to comply with the relevant laws and regulations um, uh, done by you know, our standard setting councils and also our government agencies. Second, they should, be, uh, they ha should have integrity. So straightforward and honest. So again, free from error yung ginagawa nila. They're neutral when it comes to presenting objective financial information. Third, confidentiality. So they'll, they won't disclose key financial information without proper or specific authority. So I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of insider trading. So usually, diba, the people that are handling yung mga parang secret IPOs, bawal sila mag-trade kasi they're gonna get so much money by sharing um, their, this confidential information. So because we're trusted with a lot of information, we are also expected to hold quality of the information that we use. Fourth, they should have objectivity. So again, they should be fair, no bias, no conflict of in interest that could influence their judgment whenever they're presenting information. Kasi again, the job of a an accountant is Siyempre, ayaw naman ng mga tao matuto ng hardcore accounting. Accountants, their main job is to simplify everything and then communicate to the decision makers, right? So therefore, they should be objective. Pag meron silang underlying bias, then that's clearly a red flag, right? And then lastly, they should have professional competence or due care. So basically, maintain professional knowledge and they should seek to continue the given a lot of changes. Uh, happening in the real world. So basically, um, how we conduct businesses now will drastic, drastically be different in 10 years. Malay niyo, parang baka rather than uh, fiat, parang cryptocurrency na yung uh, gagamito ng mga tao. So that would mean like uh, uh, continuing education um, for you know accountants and also the business people. So we're done now with the first, right? Madali lang naman, ethics. Um, Second, standards, right? So what are the standards? So what are standards? So basically, we call them generally accepted accounting principles. So whenever you see GAAP, that's what it means. And basically, they are principles, rules, and standards to ensure appropriate measurement, processing, and communication of financial information. So basically, uh, in order to standardize how we report sa accounting, we have standard-setting bodies. Um, or concepts, and we call these GAAP, right? So for GAAP, this is particular for US. Uh, so it standardizes the rules for accounting in the US. So now the question is, okay, so kung GAAP sa US, ano sa rest of the world? So sa rest of the world, you have what you call your IASB or your International Accounting Standards Board. So sila yung standard setting body and then ang ginagawa nila are the rules or the standards that we call IFRS. So International Financial Reporting Standards. So basically, ito yung mga iniiyakan ng mga um, third-year students. So IFRS. Lahat ng ways to account for every little thing that's happening in the financial world is contained in what we call the IFRS. So syempre, we as Philippines, meron tayong localized context on how accounting should be treated. So definitely, we defer to IFRS, pero meron tayong own set of rules here in the Philippines. And our Philippine counterpart is, kung may IASB internationally, the counterpart in the Philippines is our FRSC, or our Financial Reporting Standards Council. And ang ginagawa ng FRSC, kung IFRS internationally, Ang sinusundan nila is, or ang ginagawa nila is PFRS, Philippine Financial Reporting Standards. So basically, accountants in uh, the Philippines are expected to follow PFRS, right? So next, um, another standard setting body international is you, they have what they call their International Financial Reporting Interpretations Committee or IFRIC. Um, and basically, they have various interpretations in order to assess kung ano yung mga different scenarios. So again, we have a local counterpart called PIC or Philippine Interpretations Committee. So for um, they also create the interpretations um, when it comes to um, you know, our rules in the Philippines. So um, super important to take note is that how um, in terms of accounting, it really depends on the size of business. So um, ideally, you should memorize this in terms of ano ba yung mga expectations ng reports based on the level or the size of the entity. 
So let's start with large entities, right? Or what we call publicly accountable entities. For publicly accountable entities, they're expected to apply the full PFRS, meaning walang shortcuts. So ito yung super complex, ito yung super dugo, sobrang daming disclosures. Full PFRS. And the reason why is because a lot of people deal with these large entities or these publicly accountable entities and therefore max yung standards na kailangan natin gamitin um, because mas maraming stakeholders. Now, let's go to a smaller size. Paano kung mga SMEs, right? So for medium entity, have a choice. They can go like the full PFRS or there is a SME version of the PFRS. So they can choose either the full or the SME version. For small entities, they have choices. They can either do the full, the SME version, or the small version of the PFRS. And then finally, for micro entities, they have two, either the PFRS for small or using the income tax basis when it comes to their reporting, reporting standards. So again, the complexity and the breadth of the reports or the standards depend on the size of the entity. Kapag large entity, full PFRS. Kapag micro, not as strict. Either small version of the PFRS or the income tax basis. So now, uh, let's go, move on to the third building block. So the first one was about, um, you know, yung ethics. The second one was about the standards or the regulations. The third one is how do we actually measure, right? So these are just good things to note, pero we don't need naman to take a deep dive right now. So in terms of measuring, you can measure either two ways. Number one is historical cost principle. So you record at their cost upon acquisition or occurrence. Meaning, magkano mo ba siya nakuha or nabili? So for example, meron akong lupa na nag-invest ako. Pare, bumili ako ng lupa ng 7 million. But eh, reporting um, five years um, into the future, pag may asset ako na land, yung pangalan, by using historical cost principle, it will still be stated at 7 million. So that's what the historical cost is or magkano ko siya binili at the time of the acquisition or the occurrence. So that's one way of measuring. Another way of measuring is what you call fair value principle, meaning you record using prices at arm's length transaction. So arm's length transaction meaning um, one relation lang from the buyer to the seller. So it's either the price that you would be received to sell an asset or a price that would be paid in order to sell a liability at uh, the fair value. So usually the basis here is the general market value. So um, again, uh, in terms of measurement and basis, there's a historical cost basis, a base, and there's also a current value base. For historical cost, it that existed when the transactions happen versus current value na may iba iba siya. Either it's the fair value, like what I talked about in the earlier slide. It could be your current cost. So current cost meaning the amount to acquire same or equivalent asset less the transaction cost, or settle the same equivalent obligation, less the transaction cost, or present value. So when we take a deep dive into the various assets, liabilities, etc., etc., mas malinaw na to. But then, uh, important lang dito is there's measurement basis you need to take account of. Um, and then lastly, we have our building blocks or our key assumptions. So these are the assumptions. Um, that form the building blocks on which financial accounting measurement is based. So we have four major assumptions. So in our exercises, in our quizzes, if it's silent, ang assumption is that these four key assumptions will always apply, right? So we have four assumptions. The first assumption is what we call the going concern, meaning the financial statements are normally prepared on the assumption that an entity will continue in operation for this foreseeable future. So meaning, pare, may mga companies tayo na gumagawa tayo ng financial statements, right? Ang assumption doon, hindi sila mababankrupt next year. Ang assumption is, they're gonna be indefinitely in the future, they're gonna continue the operations. That's, that's the, basically, in the most basic sense, what a going concern is. Second assumption, monetary unit. So basically, ang sinasabi lang niya is that only those that have transaction data that can be expressed in terms of money should be the ones included when it comes to the recording process. Diba, going back to the definition of an economic event, 
it's the one that has consequential effects to the business, so it's relevant to the business. But it's also should also be measured in monetary unit, and that is because of this assumption, the monetary unit assumption. Third, economic entity. Let's go back to corporations. The ba sabi ko sa corporations, the corporation is a separate entity from the individual owners. So that talks about the third key assumption. Na the activities of the entity or the corporation should be kept separate and distinct from the activities of the owners and all other economic entities. So pag corporation or any type of, when you're accounting, dapat separate yung economic entity niya compared to kung ano yung mga personal whatever ng owners related to that type of businesses. So to highlight this, um, again, let's do ng sa chat na lang. Let's ask ourselves, using the um, this principle, do we record or not? So number one, supplies are purchased on account. Is this something that we should record or not record? Um, yeah. Okay, so gets. Okay, record. Okay, an employee is fired. Record, not record. So not record. So hindi naman tayo chismoso, diba? Parang, okay, that's sad. Pero um, this is not objective at all. Uh, it can be uh, measured um, in monetary unit. Um, and it's separate from the entity. Owner withdraws cash from the business for personal use. Okay, record. Because kahit na personal use, kinuhanan niya pa rin yung business. So from the separate entity, kumuha siya ng pera para ilagay dun sa personal account niya. And therefore, we should record. Now, owner purchased a car from his personal money. Not because yung personal entity economic entity. Okay, got it. Good. And then lastly, the last assumption is time period. Basically, ang time period lang is that um, we report basing on a maintained and reported for specific periods of time and it should be consistent each year. Um, so, ito, we'll discuss this further basically in accruals. Um, pero, you know, it's just good to, to note what a time period assumption is. Okay, so we're now in the fourth part. Um, are there any questions before we move on to the parang, super solving? So, we have 30 minutes to go um, for um, the next three parts. Um, if none, kindly uh, do a thumbs up. So honestly, the first three, um, most of those theory questions yon. So what I'm advising you is for the first three parts, as long as gets nyo naman and memorize yung mga important concepts mentioned, you're good na with the thir first three. Now, we're gonna move on na to the super important part of today's lecture, which would be the accounting equation. Okay, tapos na tayo sa admin process. Alam na natin what accounting is. Alam na natin sino gumagawa accounting, and alam na natin ano yung mga building blocks that would serve as our basis when it comes to framing our accounting rules. So now, we now take a deep dive into the world of accounting. And syempre, if, if there's one thing na hindi mawawala in accounting, that would be the ever-dreaded accounting equation. So, uh, I just want you to remember one thing. Uh, everything that a business owns has to come from somewhere. Either it's put up by the owner or lent by a third party. This is also applicable to people in real life. Na parang everything that you have or everything that who you are is either number one, through your own efforts, or number two, because of the help of other people, right? So lahat ng assets mo as a person is attributable to your own success or own efforts or it's someone else or a third party like your parents, your friends, your teachers, ganun. So same with businesses, right? So in essence, there are three major components to every business. Number one is what you call their assets or everything that a business owns. Their cash, their property, their inventory, everything, na resources nila, right? And that assets, you can actually break it down into two sources. Some assets um, will come from your equity or what is put up by the owners, meaning, kware ako, gumawa ko ng cake shop, ang asset ko doon would be um, my inventory, yung cakes, right? Pero meron rin akong in-invest na money doon. So that would represent the equity that I gave up. So that's the first source of assets. Your second source of your assets would be liabilities, or what you owe party. So kware ako, uh, ano, parang biglang dumami yung orders kasi 
uh, kasi na stress from accounting or whatever. So, kailangan ko bumili ng maraming ingredients. So, wala akong pera. Sabihin ko, ah, mami, pautang naman. So, nag-infuse ako ng cash, so additional asset, pero that's a liability on my end because that's not something I put up on my own. That's something that I owe to a third party, right? So, in the simplistic sense, you have three things that you have to account for. Your assets, your liabilities, and your equity, which is beautifully summed up into this phrase, Everything that the business owns has to come from somewhere. It's either lent by a third party or put up by, a, by an owner. So, ang accounting equation is basically assets should be equal to liabilities plus equity. Or A is equal to L plus E. Okay? So, that's the God formula for accounting. That is the, the accounting equation. Uh, visually, uh, things to note. Um, So the assets um, should equal the liabilities plus the equity. So assets should always equal to the sum of the liabilities and equity. Right? Um, and in order to make this more hardworking, let's break down the formula. Right? So we have assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. And like what I have mentioned, as much as possible in future, pag may mga ganito tayo, ita try ko na rin i-break down. Pero... I want to challenge you guys na pag may formula na binigay, break it down na naturally. So, if alam niyo na asset is equal to liabilities plus equity, then you also know how to account for liabilities. Liabilities is assets minus equity. Equity is assets minus liability. Right? So, to make this hardworking, let's try to solve um, four, four examples. Um, so, basically, binigay sa inyo parang yung assets, yung liabilities and equity for one company. And then we have to solve for ano ba yung assets using the accounting equation. Uh, just wanted to make sure you guys can see the calculator um, on the ano. Okay. So let's solve. Um, and then you can solve with me. So um, kindly take note ko ano yung guess or answer nyo for the first example with the accounting equation. So given that your liabilities is 25,000 and 75, how much should your assets be, right? So A is equal to L plus E, meaning we basically just add 25,000 assets plus liabilities. Uh, liabilities plus equity is equal to your assets. So 100,000, right? Correct. Yeah. Next, equity naman yung nawala. Right? So again, parang usually, um, this is a super simplistic exercise. Pero huwag kayo magpanic sa exam. Kung ang alam nyo lang is yung first one, you'll be able to solve it naman by your own just by understanding the formula. So okay, ngayon, ang nawala naman, equity. So, alam na natin, 450 yung assets and liabilities. So, magkano yung equity kaya? Uh, are there any guesses? So, assets minus liabilities will be your residual equity. So, 355,000. Right? Madali pa naman so far. And then, liabilities, oh, let's complete na everything. Um, hindi nyo alam yung liabilities. Alam nyo lang, asset is 38,000. And uh, alam nyo lang na equity is 30,000. Siyempre, nakakaya nagka-calculator pa ako. Pero okay, 8,000 liabilities. So yun. So basically, that's it. Everything should balance, right? Balance eh. Assets will always be equal to your liabilities and your equity, right? Um, and then the last would be, um, magpapanik ka. Parang shocks. Alam ko lang mag-solve pag mag-isa, right? But then, eto, um, Equity is two times more than the liability. So, uh, we'll just add another step. So, first, let's solve for um, liability. So, sabi niya, it's two times more than the liability. So, correct. Um, na the liability would therefore be 25, right? Because 25 times 2 is equity. And now, because you know, so 50,000 uh, divided by 2 is 25,000. And then now that we know that 25,000 yung equity, a liability, we add that to equity. 75,000 na. Okay. So basically that's it. Um, in terms of assets, liabilities, and equity. So yeah, that's basically the formula you need to understand. Now, now that we know how the formula works, let's focus on the definition and how to classify between assets, liabilities, and equity. An asset is a resource controlled by the entity as a result of past events, but what your expectation is may 
benefits are expected to flow to the entity. So that's the formal definition of what an asset is. It's a resource controlled by the entity and you expect future economic benefits. So my inflow ka na expect from an asset. So what are your assets? First, you have cash, right? So cash, everyone's familiar. Yun yung favorite natin na regalo sa Pasko, right? So Gcash. So cash is the legal tender or coins. So ano yung benefit ng cash? Basically, you can buy anything you want. Pag, nas- pag nagsistress shop ka sa Lazada or sa Shopee, you use cash to buy anything you want, be it an experience, be it a product. So that's your future economic benefit. Simple to understand, right? Next, um, receivables. So receivables is amount of money owed to you. So for example, uh, nagbenta ako ng cake, right? So uh, sinabi sa akin ng uh, friend ko, Uy, sorry, uh, ano, parang uh, kailangan ko pang i-transfer from my bank to my GCash. I'll pay you na lang next month. Uh, so basically, meron akong accounts receivable from that person. So the future benefit of that accounts receivable is that I expect na since he owes me money, that will turn into cash. And again, cash is an asset. So my future economic benefit ako from the receivables. Right? Then you have your supplies. So office supplies. Bakit siya asset? Because you use your office supplies in order to make money. Right? In order for you to conduct businesses. Same with inventory. Inventory for your products that your company sells. Yung benefit mo doon is pwede kong ibenta tong cake na to and exchange, I'll get money. Right? So I'll get cash. I'll have future economic benefit. Prepaid expenses, meaning you paid in advance. So for example, um, uh, kware, nag-rent ako ng factory for one month. At the start of the month, babayaran ko na yun. And since binayaran ko yun, prepaid rent. So the benefit na I expect is that during that one month, I'll be able to use the space in order to conduct my business and ultimately make my cash. So asset rin yun, right? And then lastly, you have your prepaid a property plant equipment. So you have your land building machinery equipment. So the benefits here is um, you use your you use these uh, machineries to operate your business. So kung kare meron akong stand mixer, right? That's a that's an equipment. It helps me make cake. So therefore, I can get cash from it. So in essence, these are your assets, right? These are your resources that you control, and then because of your control, you expect future economic benefits. Next, we go to liabilities. A liability naman, in contrast, is a present obligation because of a past event wherein you expect na mawawalan ka naman ng, pe- ng resource. It will result into an outflow from the entity um, embodying the economic benefits. So some of the liabilities that we'll encounter in the semester would be accounts payable. So this is amount of money you owe to someone. Diba, pare, yung friend ko may utang, right? I have a receivable, pero from his perspective or her perspective, they have a payable. They need to pay me. So what is their obligation? They have to pay off their accounts payable. Next, accrued expense. Parang ano lang yun eh, mga salaries, wages, payable. So, kare, di ba, Meralco. Di ba ginagamit niyo muna bago niyo bayaran? Uh, so, electricity yun, right? Um, so, kare. Um, ako, may in-employ ako na worker, taga, tagagawa ng dough, ganun. So, magkatrabaho muna siya, and then sa payday ko na lang siya babayaran, right? So, I have an obligation to pay him or her um, at the payday. And therefore, I have to pay their worker salary for the work that they've already done. So, I have an obligation to them to pay for their accrued expenses. Notes payable, para lang yung accounts payable, pero it's a written contract. Um, with uh, regarding your debt. So again, you have to pay off your debt. And then finally, your interest payable is usually kapag mabaro ka ng pera, uh, may interest yun sa banko or kung sa kaibigan mo, kung sobrang barat siya, di ba? Parang pare 20 lang hindi mo, tapos hindi siya 30 pa rin. So interest is the 10 extra. So interest payable, you have to pay off your interest. Okay? Yan. So those are your liabilities. These are your may present obligation ka and because of that obligation, you have to uh, result in an outflow of your uh, resources. And then lastly, equity, which is my favorite definition, kasi uh, literally, ang definition lang niya is the residual interest in the assets of the entity. So basically, 
assets minus liability would be your equity. Kaya siya residual interest, right? So, yung assets mo, isubtract mo yung liabilities mo, you'll get your equity. Now, um, let's further break down what makes up your equity, right? So, di ba, um, particularly for sole proprietorship, di ba may owner? And then we already established na the owner should still be a separate entity from your economic entity. So now, si owner, pwedeng, dalawa yung pwede niyang gawin, right? Pwede siyang mag-infuse ng capital or what you call your owner's capital or pwede siyang kumuha ng pera kasi gusto niya ng pambili ng ano ng wala ng clothes or pang bilhin niya ng Shopee right so that would be your owner's drawing so basically pag kumuha siya ng pera from the business sa personal use that would be a drawing or kinukuhanan niya ng pera yung economic entity and therefore logically pag owner's capital it increases your equity eh nag-infuse ka ng pera eh pero pag owner's drawing you're taking away money then that would reduce your equity. So now that we understand the two major components of equity, let's try to expand the accounting equation a bit, right? So from assets is equal to liabilities plus equity, let's expand it further. You see equity, equity, let's further break it down to owner's capital and owner's drawing. So sasabihin nyo, bakit minus si owner's drawing? Because it represents a decrease in your equity. Well, the si owner's capital is positive, right? So basically, now you have a new equation. Assets is equal to liabilities plus owner's capital minus owner's drawings, right? And then, let's focus on owner's capital. So, okay, let's forget muna about owner's drawing. So owner's capital, merong dalawang things rin na nag affect sa kanya in the income statement level what you call your income or your revenue, which would increase your owner's capital, or your expense, right? which would decrease your owner's capital. So let's define um, the whole equation. right? So revenue, yung kita mo, minus expense, will either result in a net income or a net loss. Okay? So net income siya, or a positive effect to your equity if your revenues is uh, bigger than your expense. So for example, nagbenta ako ng uh, 100 pesos na cake, 75 yung expense, I have a net income of 25, right? Next, paano kung ang kita ko lang 100 pero yung expenses ko pala parang 100, 200, right? So 100 minus 200 is equal to negative 100. Yeah, tama, negative 100. So net loss. So a net loss will uh, result into a decrease in your equity. Meaning, if your revenue is less than your expense, then you have your net loss. So this is the equation. So now let's define lang each. So revenue is your increases in economic benefits. So either it will, it's in the form of inflows or enhancements of assets or decreases of liability. That will result in an increase in equity. Examples, some uh, things they earn from selling merchandise. Um, and then common accounts, service revenue, sales revenue. So in terms of like visualizing, uh, income revenue will increase your equity. And because of two things, either it's an enhancement of an asset or a decrease in your liabilities. So that would be your revenue, right? For expenses, it will result in a decrease in your economic benefits because of two things, either outflow or depletions of assets or incurrence of liabilities, resulting in a decrease in equity. So basically, parang, an example of this would be operating the business, um, advertising expense, salaries and wages expense, utilities and expense, etc., etc. So visually, an expense will lower your equity because of either pinababa niya assets mo or pinataas niya yung liability mo. And therefore, bumababa si equity. And then lastly, net income or net loss is just your difference between your revenue or your income and your ex expense. Income minus expense. So again, net income, revenue is bigger than expense, so increase in equity. 
net loss revenue is less than expense, decrease in equity. So now, the next thing that we want to do is to further break down our expanded accounting equation. So again, we start off with the master formula. So you have your assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. And then our first iteration, we broke down equity into two other components. Um, owner's capital minus owner's drawings. Now in the second iteration, we further break down owner's capital into three. So number one would be your owner's capital, meaning pertaining to infusions or investments of the owner to the economic entity. And then obviously you'll have plus revenue, so the revenues generated, minus expenses incurred. So all these three components further break down our owner's capital. And therefore, in terms of our second iteration, our ultimate expanded accounting equation would be as follows. So assets is equal to liabilities plus owner's capital plus revenue minus expenses minus owner's drawings. So other ways to put this is that you can combine your revenues and expenses. So either owner's capital, uh, so plus net income, plus owner's capital, minus owner's drawings. If there's a profit or the revenues is greater than your expenses, you'll have a net income. So plus siya because that would increase your equity. The other version is pag may net loss. But see that the difference would be minus net loss plus owner's capital, minus owner's drawings. Again, because net loss means that your uh, revenues is less than your expenses. And therefore, ultimately, that would lower your equity, kaya minus. So, just to summarize, again, no need to be intimidated. It's still the same basic accounting equation that assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. The only difference is that si equity, medyo maarte siya in a way na gusto niya pang magpa-breakdown into the four major components. So again, equity can be broken down into four. So you have your first owner's capital, basically yung infusions or additional investments by the owner. Revenues um, generated from your services or se selling your product minus expenses incurred minus owner's drawings. So owner's drawings meaning, again, taking out money from the economic entity so that they can use it for their personal use. So again, ultimately, our expanded accounting equation will be assets is equal to liabilities plus owner's capital plus revenue minus expense minus owner's drawings. So actually, that ends our fourth learning objective. Um, now that we know the whole accounting equation, we'll look at the effects, right? So we'll analyze the business transactions. So again, what are transactions? These are economic events, right? So economic events of an entity that are recorded may be external or internal. Um, and the economic events, again, is to either identify record or communicate. So now we have a comprehensive problem. So uh, kindly take a screenshot na lang so that you have like a high res copy with you. And then I'll proceed na in terms of how to solve this so that I'll be able to help you with your exercises. So basically, Macy Taft started her own consulting firm, Macy Consulting, on May 1. And the following transactions occurred. So now, parang shocks. Dati, isa, isa lang yung transactions natin. Ngayon, parang more than 10, right? So basically, how do you solve for these types, right? We use what we call transaction analysis. So there's two ways of solving for this. You have your basic transaction analysis and you have your advanced transaction analysis. Si basic, ang tiratrack mo lang would be how are the assets, liabilities, or equities increasing or decreasing? The direction lang, right? mag increase ba si asset because of this transaction? mag decrease ba si liabilities? mag increase ba si equity? Etc. Etc. Pag advance, meron na tayong monetary units na kasama. Tapos si asset, ibinibreakdown na natin to for the particular classifications. So from asset, meron ka ng cash, receivable, supplies, equipment. Si liabilities, accounts payable, notes payable. Si equity, owner's capital, owner's drawing, uh, revenue, expense. Right? So para madali, let's first answer with our basic transaction analysis. So basically, ang kailangan ng gawin, would be let's look at the first transaction and then let's identify um, how would that affect our accounting components. 
So for this particular, um, for the sake of time, kindly indicate na lang kung piece ng A, so basically parang uh, A, parang increase, A, So parang uh, just do this format kung increase or decrease and then what are the uh, applicable components. So um, yeah, let's solve together na lang pero um, for the interest of time, I'll just walk through this. So first, si Macy invested 7,000 euros in the business. Okay, cash. Okay, asset yon. So that's an increase in asset. Okay, so nasaan ang galing yung asset? Si Macy Rao, the owner, invested. Oh, parang invested owner's capital. So, nag-increase si asset, equity. Okay. So, that's basically it. So, nag-balance ba? Yes. Kasi same direction, right? Situation tumaas. Pareho silang tumaas, nag-balance. Okay. Next transaction. Ay! Oh, sorry. Spoiler. Uh, paid 900 euros for office rent for the month. So, Paid. So, cash na naman. Okay, bumaba yung cash ko. Right? Of 900 euros. Okay. Rent. Ano yung bumaba? Expense. Diba? Nagkaroon ako ng rent expense. So, that would for expense is a component of equity. Kaya, bumaba si assets, bumaba si equity. Next. Purchase 800 euros of supplies on account. So, um, supplies. Supplies is, what is supplies? Ay, sorry. Supplies is an asset. So, tumaas si supplies. Pero ano yung on account? On account, accounts receivable, accounts payable. Meaning, bumili ka on account, hindi mo pa binayaran ng cash. Ang ginawa mo, nag-accounts payable ka. So, tumaas si supplies, which is an asset, pero tumaas rin yung accounts payable mo, which is, an utang or a money that you have to pay eventually for the purchases that you did for the supplies. So, increase in asset, increase in liability. Next, you paid 125 in advertising. Paid in cash. So, bumaba, bumaba si asset for uh, advertising. Usually, advertising, that's under advertising expense. Expense is equity. So, bumaba si cash or asset, bumaba si equity. Next, you received 4,000 cash for the services performed. As si cash, asset. And then services performed, revenue yun, right? May revenue ka from your services. Revenue is a component of equity. So tumaas si asset, tumaas si equity. Next, Withdrew 1,000 euros cash for personal use. Bumab cash. Nag-withdraw raw for personal use. Ano yun? Is that revenue or expense? Neither. It's owner's drawings, right? And owner's drawings is under equity. So saan uh, bumaba si cash at bumaba si equity? Next, performed 6,400 on services on account. So, basically, tumaas si asset and then tumaas rin yung revenue mo. Pero the difference lang is on account. So, hindi si cash yung tumaas. Ang tumaas is si accounts receivable. Pero generally, asset increased, equity increased. Right? Next, you paid your uh, employees uh, salary. Bumaba na naman yung cash mo. So, decrease in asset. Uh, employee salaries. Usually, employee salaries are employee expenses. Expenses are a component of equity. So, bumaba si asset, bumaba si equity. Okay, bought shoes using cash withdrawn on May 12. So, nung May 12, nag-withdraw siya, yun pala, pinambili lang yun ng sapatos. Siguro may bagong release ni Nike or something. So, what would be the effect for economic entity? None. Because... That's a personal entity. Pera na na yun eh. So, hindi natin, wala yung effect sa atin. Okay? So, super important si May 18. Can we take note? Na pag na-withdraw mo na yung pera, whatever you use it for, wala tayong pake. Right? Ang importante yung economic entity. 20. Paid 600 to the supplies purchase on May 3. O, balik tayo kay May 3. 
ah, ito pala yung supplies na inutang niya. So, bumaba yung cash ko kasi binayaran ko ng 300, pero bumaba rin yung utang ko ng 300. So, that would be a decrease in assets and a decrease in liability. Uh, received 4,000 for... So, di ba sa May 15, meron namang kang receivable. Naging cash lang. So, tumaas yung cash mo, pero bumaba yung receivable mo kasi nabayaran na. So, ito, asset, or tumaas si cash ng 4,000, pero bumaba si receivable ng 4,000. So, net-net, wala siyang effect kay assets because it increased the same way that it decreased. Pero super important na alam niyo yung dalawang things na nangyari. Na tumaas si cash, pero bumaba si receivable. Uh, 26. You borrowed 5,000 euros from the bank on a notes payable. So, nag-borrow ka. So, pag nag-borrow ka ng pera, tumataas yung pera mo. So, increase in asset. Right? Pero, umutang ka pala ng notes payable. Oh, notes payable sounds familiar. Liability. So, obviously, it's an increase in asset, increase in liability. Next, purchase your equipment. Oh, equipment. Equipment. On account. So, how do we, um, uh, ano, on account. So, hindi cash yung pinangbayad mo. Umutang ka na naman ng accounts payable kasi on account. Therefore, tumaas si asset because of your equipment because you bought it on account or tumaas si account payable. So, increase in asset, increase in liability. And then finally, you paid uh, 275 for utilities. Paid. So, cash. Nagbayad ka ng cash, bumaba si cash. Uh, then, utilities is an expense. So, expense is a component of equity. Bumaba si, equi si equity. So, bumaba si cash, ay si asset, bumaba si equity. Okay. So, um, it's 11.30 uh, na. So, um, for those that have to leave, um, feel free. Um, the reason why i-continue ko na lang to is so that in the recorded version of the lecture, um, complete na natin si concept lecture so that in the second session, um, we can proceed um, to the through the, the session. Um, for those that have to leave, um, okay lang. Uh, thank you so much for attending. Super appreciated. Um, konti lang naman. So, this is actually, so the remaining parts would be um, we'll solve this last exercise so that this would be your basis for your advanced transaction analysis. And then I'll just quickly go through the statements. So again, feel free to um, proceed na to your next class or prepare for your next class. Um, but um, yeah, and then I'll upload naman the recorded version um, within the day. Thank you. So okay, let's proceed. So we're done with the basic um, transaction analysis. So the advanced transaction analysis is just an expanded format And rather than directions of up or down, specific specific monetary units, right? So then um, we just go back to um, yung first example. So invested 7,000 in cash in the business. Um, so going back, um, so going back, wait, um, kindly give me a moment. Or lang we have a reference for the basic. Okay. So basically, ano ba yung ginawa ko? Um, basically, I took a screenshot lang of what, yung basic analysis because we're still gonna be using this, right? Pero, since advanced na to, we'll just put monetary units and then classify them into different accounts. So let's use um, the learning. Sorry, sobrang parang for ants, pero I'll just tell you what happens. So the first one would be, um, Macy invested 7,000 cash in the business, increase in assets, and increase in equity. Pero now the question is, how much and where, right? So invested 7,000 in cash. So since 7,000 in cash, that's an increase in your cash account, And then, that's an owner's capital account kasi nag-invest ng pera. So, tumaas si cash, capital ng 7,000. Gets? So, 
Consistent pa rin siya with the basic transaction analysis. Tumaas si assets, tumaas si equity, pero particularly, tumaas si cash by 7,000, tumaas si owner's capital ng 7,000. Next example. So in the next example, we said na bumaba si assets, bumaba si equity. Ano ba yung uh, second? So you paid 900 for office rent, right? Paid 900 will refer to your assets. Bumaba si cash, right? And then si rent is an expense. So it will decrease your equity. So in the advanced transaction analysis, bumaba si cash ng 900, bumaba si, uh, and then subtract yung expense, negative 900. To just symbolize na negative extension, right? Third, tumaas si asset, tumaas si liability. So purchased 800 euros of supplies on account. So purchased 800 supplies. So kay cash ba natin siya ilalagay? No. Kay supplies. Okay? So tumaas si supplies ng 800 euros worth, right? Now the question is, what binayaran yung 800 na yun? Sabi dito, binayaran mo account. And dahil on account, accounts payable siya, right? So going back, we said it increases your assets, increases your liability, but specifically for number three, it will increase your supplies by 800, yes, pero inutang mo ng accounts payable ng 800. So yung 800 na yan, ina-expect mo, down the line, babayaran mo yan ng cash. Kasi utang mo yan eh, right? So okay, number five. Um, paid 125 to advertising. So according to our basic analysis, si assets bumaba si equity because nang bayad ka ng cash, expense si advertising. Advertising expense. So negative 125 kay cash, bumaba si cash. Negative 125 advertising expense. May 9, you received 4,000 in cash for services provided. Si cash na naman. So ag- Oh, going back to our basic, ano, we said it increased our um, assets and it increased our equity. So, it will be 4,000 in cash. So, 4,000 in cash and then 4,000 in revenue. Service revenue. Right? May 12, nag-withdraw raw si owner ng 1,000. And then we said, um, in our basic analysis, it's a reduction in assets and a reduction in equity. So, basically, that would be, bumaba si cash, tapos drawings, right? So, si cash ng 1,000, si owner's drawing ng 1,000. Still, bumaba si assets, bumaba si equity. Um, next, perform 6,400 of services on account, right? So, mayroon kang revenue. Pero yung revenue, not in the form of cash, it's in the form of an account, right? So accounts receivable, right? So instead of cash yung tumaas, ang tataas is 6,400 cash. Ay, sorry, 6,400 receivable. So tumaas si asset. And then tumaas of the 6,400 increase in the revenue. Um, and then you paid 2,500 for employee salary. So employee salary is em- cash, may expense. So negative Uh, 2,500, negative 2,500. And then, ito na si May 18. Pero ng shoes, si, ano, si owner with the drawings. So again, wala tayong pake because of the economic entity assumption. That kung whatever you use with your personal money doesn't, shouldn't affect the business. Okay. May 20. Um, May 20, you paid 600 for supplies purchased on May 3. So again, ito yon si May 3, nagbayad ka ng, may utang ka ng 800. So sabi, babayaran mo na raw yung 600 out of the 800. So bababa si cash, pero bababa rin yung utang mo, right? So negative 600 si cash, negative 600 si accounts payable. May 23, o sabi naman sa May 15, o yung sa may receivable ka, yung receivable na na 64,000, finally, Parang 4,000 of those daw na-receive mo in cash. So ito yung weird analysis na si asset tumaas pero bumaba rin the same amount. So tumaas si cash kasi you receive 4,000 pero at the same time, yung receivable mo is not, it's not 4,400. 4,000 already paid. 
So, ang remaining na lang nag- kailangan magbayad is 2,400. Right? So, last three would be borrowed 5,000 from notes payable. Notes payable, so increase ng 5,000, increase yung cash ng 5,000. So, increase in asset, uh, increase in liability. Purchase equipment for 4,200 on account. What is equipment? Asset. So, tumaas si equipment, pero on account. So, umutang ka na naman. So, accounts payable. So, increase equipment of 5,000, ay, sorry, 4,200, 4,200 in liabilities or accounts payable. Last, paid 275 for utilities. So, paid for 275 utilities. Basically, bababa si cash and then utility expense under equity. So, negative 275, negative 275. The beauty of using this advanced transaction analysis is that you'll be able to know the end figures of your specific assets, your specific liabilities, and your specific equity components. Meaning, cash in total after all of the transactions for the month is 14,600. Your receivables, 2,400 na lang kasi nga nagbayad si 4,000. Si supplies, 800. And 4,200. Okay. Si liabilities, uh, nabayaran mo na yung una mong liability 100, so 200 na lang yung natira, plus the 4,200 na bagong accounts payable because you bought equipment. So you have 4,400 in accounts payable. Payable, 5,000, isa lang naman yung ano, walang bawas. Owner's capital, nag-infuse ka dun sa business mo ng 7,000. Kumuha ka 1,000 kasi pinangbili mo ng sapatos. And then yung revenues mo will be from your service revenue of 4,000 and 6,400, which is 10,400. And then your expenses will total 1,800 to represent which ones, right? So yung rent expense in May 2, si advertising expense ng May 5, si employee expense ng May 17, and si May 30 na negative 275 na, exp- na utilities expense. So negative 3,800. So let's add all the assets together. Add all the assets together, you'll get 22,000 in assets. If you add the like 10,400. If you add your equities together, that would be 12,600. So next, you add natin si 9,400 and si 12,600. And then you will have 22,000 per assets. And 22,000. So you have 22,000 in assets. And then if you add the 22,000 of uh, 9,400 plus 12,600, you'll have 22,000 in liabilities and equity. So the balance. Assets will be equal to your liabilities plus equity. So that's your advanced transaction analysis. Right? So last part, um, so this is more conceptual more than anything else. Um, it's all about preparing financial statements. So going back to the accounting equation, di ba nag-record na tayo? In the last part, we have to communicate this. And how do you communicate it? Through your financial statements. So in essence, you have five financial statements. Um, you have your balance sheet, your income st- statement, your changes in equity, your cash flows, and then you have your notes. Pero apat lang yung focus natin. Ignore na natin si notes for now. And then si cash flows, um, that would be for 99.2. Pero it's good to know na you have your four financial statements in the BS, IS, RE, and CF. Punta muna tayo kay income statement. So si income statement, it measures financial performance. So ang minimeasure mo lang sa income statements would be your revenues and expenses for a specific period of time. Bakit ko hina-highlight yung specific period of time? Because it's for the period ending December 31, important yan sa format when you create, right? So ang importante lang na kinukumpit ni income statement is net income or net loss is determined. So going back to our transaction analysis, itong portion lang na to yung gagamitin natin in order to arrive with our income statement. So we only use revenue and expense accounts. So ito lang, itong, itong gumagalaw. 
statement is basically you have the title of the company, you have your income statement, and then ito yung for the month ended May 31. Kindly take note na ganito dapat yung format. Meron kasi ibang format sa balance sheet. So kindly take note. Then again, ang components lang ng income statement is income, expense, and then ultimately, kam lang naman yung gusto niyang isolve, right? So 10,438, so 6,600 in net income. So if you go 10,438, kaya 10,438, kaya 6,600. Next, the second statement is the statement of changes in equity. So again, the equity components are what? Your owner's capital, meaning your investment, your owner's drawing, the amount of money you took away, and then your net income, your net loss, comprised of your revenue and expenses. So again, it's during the period. So pareho sila ng income statement. So in terms of the advanced transaction analysis, we take note of the all the costs, right? So si owner's capital, si owner's drawing, si revenue, si expense, lahat yon will be consolidated in our changes in uh, equity. So owner's capital, owner's drawing, revenue, expenses. So basically, this is what the statement of changes in owner's equity. So again, name of company, name of the financial statement, and then for the month ending, so period covered. And then basically, you start off with your beginning capital. Since wala naman siyang capital at the beginning, zero, right? And then, nag-infuse siya ng owner's capital of 7,000. And then, yung net income, which will come from your income statement, is 6,600. So in total, in terms of yung in-increase niya, 13,600. Pero, less the drawings or the owner's drawings, so one, minus 1,000, so your owner's equity at the end of the period is 12,600. Again, in ulit natin. What affects your owner's um, your equity? Your owner's capital of 7,000. Your net income or your net loss that will come from your income statement. So this one, 6,600. So since net income plus 6,600, so 13,600. And then my drawing cap, which is a reduction in equity, so minus 1,000, is equal to 12,600. Uh, last, um, statement of financial position. So this one is a snapshot of the business financial condition. So unlike changes of equity, unlike income statement, this should be reported at a specific moment in time. It's a snapshot. So it's not ending period of, it's more of as of a specific date. So in terms of the transaction analysis, you'll be able to get your figures in the subtotals. Ano ba yung subtotal ng cash, ng receivable, ng supplies, ng equipment, etc., etc., right? So this is how it should look like. Name of the company, name of the financial statement, statement of financial position. Hindi siya period ending, it's a snapshot. So it's as of May 31. And then, we are gonna break down the financial statements into two. Your assets and then your liabilities and your owner's equity. The reason being, we want to show that they're balanced. So going back, di ba alam natin itong mga subtotals na to. So basically, cash is 14,600, AR is 2,400, supplies is 800, equipment is 4,200, and then total assets is 22,000, like what we showed earlier. Sa liabilities naman, Going back to the subtotals, 4,400, 5,000. So AP is 4,400. Notes payable is 5,000. So total liabilities time for. What is your ending equity capital? For that, we get that from the changes in equity. Right? So 12,600 na lang ilalabas dito. So pag inag mo si 9,4 at saka si 12,6, you'll get 22,000. So nagbalance ba si assets? Assets is equal to 22,000. Liabilities of 9,400 plus 12,600 of equity is equal to 22,000. Therefore, assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. Last, statement of cash flows. Again, this will be mentioned in 99.2. But then this is a more of a specific snapshot of your cash receipts and cash disbursements. 
So this is for discussion in VI 99.2, but for appreciation, they can be found in the cash component. So ang pakilam mo lang is lahat ng nag-affect sa cash. Right? So cash plus other assets. So actually, um, that ends our first lecture. Um, so again, thank you so much for your patience. Um, uh, apologies na extend lang ng 15 minutes, but as aligned, um, this is so that we can focus on solving for the exercises um, in the next um, session. Uh, so yan, I'll segment it so that madali niyong hanapin. Um, before I end, for those who stayed, thank you so much. Are there any other, any questions um, that you want to bring up before I formally end the recording? Um, if none, parang kindly do a thumbs up na lang so that we're sure. Um, yeah. yeah. So thank you so much, everyone. So um, that formally ends our first um, lecture. So for uh, the next session, expectation would be number one, um, kung set up na si Ovle, I will need you to upload your answers to the exercises so that in the second session, we'll just be computing, uh, solving together. Second, aside from that, kindly identify your exercise wish list. So, punta kayo sa Wigan. Ano may mga question types na different from our exercises na gusto nyo rin isolve in class together, right? Um, yun. So, uh, those are the two lang, the expectations um, for the next session. So, purely solving. Um, and then, uh, we'll try to have more exercises. So, again, for this lecture, ako yung taya. For next lecture, um, I'll ask people to start reciting um, just so that there's a give and take. Um, so if you have any parang games or gamification tools uh, that you want me to look into, um, kindly let me know para we can incorporate in the next session. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, yeah, that ends for today. <laughs>